Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This award is presented to a, an individual or a program that has demonstrated outstanding creativity in the craft section. And tonight, obviously, it goes to a program which is very close to my heart. It's a program that we like to think of as holding up many of the values when it comes to public service broadcasting. It's really very much made for our audience, and we seek at every opportunity to communicate with them. To engage them, we don't use exotic creatures from the Arctic. We don't use celebrity wildlife from jungles or beautiful CGI of distant constellations. We use badgers. <laughs> if we're lucky, we've got <laughs> badgers. The best of British wildlife plays out a soap opera live on our viewers' screens. I just have to tell you, it's a lot more wild than Coronation Street. Not quite as raucous, but every bit as wild. And we use this because we want that audience to respond and interact with the programme. And the multi-platforming that's developed over the last years means we've achieved that. And we have managed to get people off of their sofas, away from the screen when the programme's finished, and out into the environment. And when I say people, I'm talking about millions of people. And for mine and many of the other participants in the programme, this is a vocational job. Because if we can't engage those people, we can't get them to develop an affinity with the best of British wildlife, which is so close to our hearts, then we have little chance of looking after it. To achieve what we seek to do requires a team which is manifest with inordinate complexity. It's more complex than the optimal foraging strategies of common shrews. I won't go into it at the moment. But we've got a, a team of 100 people. We've just moved to a new site, and I found, this evening, found out this evening that there were 63 kilometres of optical uh, cable that has been laid out. When I came to the programme, replacing the uh, great Bill Oddie a couple of years ago, that I had one fear, not that the cast, the wildlife, would let me down, but that the team might have got into a format, might have got a little bit lazy. They'd done a few shows, they were kicking them out, they were getting the viewers. My most heartening surprise when I turned up on the set was that that was certainly not the case. Throughout, the team demonstrates extraordinary dedication, maximal energy in an enduring quest for perfection. It is a fantastic privilege to be a member of that team, and it's justly right, I feel, that they're celebrated here tonight. Anyway, enough for me. Let's take a look at some of the best bits of the show. <laughs> It's real wildlife, live in real time. Springwatch is going to start now! How about this little family? Are they even birds? It look more like jelly babies at this stage. So much stoat action. The stoatometer has gone off the scale. <laughs> Pile of polecat poo. Here it is. Jeez, look at that! Since piloting in 2003, Springwatch has established itself as one of the most innovative and eagerly anticipated programming events of the year. In charting the fortunes of British wildlife during the changing seasons, it has not only thrilled and educated audiences in their millions, but also revolutionised the way we think about wildlife broadcasting. It's just one. Taking some cheese straight out of Don's hand. That is unbelievable. Shot in some of the UK's most stunning locations and undeterred by the great British weather, Springwatch has evolved into a truly multi platform phenomenon. We have got a brand new show that's starting immediately after this one. Um, the way to see Springwatch Unsprung, as it's known, is by pressing the red button. Unsprung is where we share some of your videos, your pictures, we try to answer some of your questions, and we throw in a few things of our own, a bit of a quiz and, and the mystery table and stuff like that. Based entirely around audience feedback, Springwatch Unsprung is just one example of how the programme has not only inspired people to get involved with wildlife, but how the audience is now creating their own content for the show. This is called Vandal Crow. There's probably some kids hanging around in that park that are getting the blame for that. The show has effortlessly spread into the worlds of news and children's broadcasting. He looks very fast. I think I'll call him Lightning. 
In addition to this, its user-friendly website, which features multiple live feeds and a live commentary from the team on the ground, has helped the show build up a huge and devoted online following. As well as organising hundreds of events based around conservation with the support of BBC Learning, the show has also launched the hugely successful Breathing Places campaign with its mission to help people improve their local patch. Using over 50 cameras and a team of over 100 people in a location with no power, phones or road access makes this show an incredible feat of logistics and technical innovation. Presumably it's quite a delicate operation rigging cameras in a nest box where something's nesting. Yeah, we generally wait until, um, until the birds are on chicks rather than when they're on eggs and then we'll do it as carefully as we can and in as, as many visits as we need to really. Using miles of cable and the most up-to-date camera technology, it is one of the BBC's largest and most complicated outside broadcasts. This is the nerve centre. All the pictures from the cameras from the bird's nest are all pouring into here. And these poor people, constantly, nearly 24 hours a day, monitoring them. If anything happens, bang, they hit the button, and that goes into tomorrow's programme. The question on everyone's lips today is, did Runty survive the night? Runty was left with two of his siblings. Um, one decided to go fairly bravely. The second one went, and this then was, oh. he was left. It was rather sad. It was. It, it was absolutely. We get the. We get the idea. The real stars of the show are, of course, the everyday British animals that are placed at the heart of this utterly compelling and very real drama. He or she decided to perch on the edge of the nest, making a huge racket. And unfortunately, it was that racket that alerted this. Big brother eats little brother. <laughs> this is the fight we really hoped was never going to happen. For a moment, it looks like there's a bit of trouble, but oh, challenger slipping, slipping. Oh, <laughs> it's all over. Five o'clock in the morning when our story developers came in to keep an eye on him. And look, look at this. This is fantastic news. Mum came back and fed Runty. He hadn't been abandoned. Forget your lady busters. You've bagged yourself a big cannon. <laughs> oh, I don't know, I fancy you. It's going to be a morning of very bad jokes. What do you expect at a hair port? <laughs> Spring Watch has entertained and educated its way into the hearts of the nation. Ow. And with its uncanny ability to remain fresh, informative and enthralling, it will surely be with us for many springs to come. Oh. 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 This is biting! <laughs> 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 it gives me a great bit of pleasure to present Tim Schoons, the executive producer of Springwatch, with this year's BAFTA Special Award. This is how we do it in Springwatch, very high-tech auto cue, make it up on the spot. Um, I speak um, on behalf of my dear friend and fellow exec, Fiona Pitcher, um, engineering manager, Ian Dewar, live director, David Weir, and in fact, this enormous group of people who are just the tip of the iceberg. We could probably fit the Springwatch team into this room just. This is truly a great day for blue tits, badgers, squirrels, and snails. I wish they could all be here tonight as well. Um, not to mention our audience, but then that really would start getting a bit packed, wouldn't it? Um, we are very, very surprised to be getting this award. I mean, look at the company we're in tonight. Truly surprised and deeply, deeply honoured to be here. Um, as I'm sure you saw from the film, it's a big team effort. Uh, it's such a lot of people doing such a lot of things, all culminating in three weeks in, in June, May and June, and then a, a romp through the autumn as well. Um, it's quite something. I'm still humbled to see so many people working so hard, as Chris said, to pull the whole thing together. And I still get a tingle every time a show goes out because it's wild and it's live and it's really, really engaging people. Um, it's been a huge amount of work over many years. 
but we've also been very fortunate. I mean, we have the best content in the world. I'm sure you've noticed this spring, British wildlife is gorgeous, and it's around us all, and it's for everyone, and everyone can feel a connection to it. So we have the most wonderful content in the world. Um, we also came to be just at a really interesting time in broadcasting, when everything went digital, when the digital revolution really started to affect what we did and what our audience did. So it made the, the gizmos that Ian and his team used smaller, faster, so we could get them further. Um, it also made our audience vastly more empowered to join in, to get involved, and to really do something with us, which was unique, and we're very lucky to be there at that time. And we've also been very fortunate to do this for the BBC, because this is just the sort of the thing that BBC does, and BBC does really well, to, to allow ourselves to get really big, really fast, and for the Beeb to allow us to take creative risks when, if you looked at this on paper, it should never have worked. So thank you, BBC, and thank you, actually, three generations of BBC Two controllers, from Jane Root, who took, stuck her neck out in the first place, to Roly Keating, and now to Janice Hadlow, who've been immensely supportive of our ups and downs and our tryings out of all sorts of very strange things. Um, so next, well, IPTV's on the way, connected television, when the whole thing, the whole game changes once more. We feel very excited about that prospect because we've loved being in the first wave of the digital revolution. So what's really nice about this, something so complex, something so technical, something that's relied on such enormous effort from these wonderful people here has actually achieved something very human and very simple to engage people with the wonderful wildlife that we have all around us. And I think that's really wonderful and, and lends itself to a thought of a really bright green digital future for all of us. Thank you very, very much. Guys, congratulations, the special award. Can I first ask you to, to go through and uh, tell me who you are and what you do on the show? Well, I'm fortunate to be one of the presenters on the current uh, series of Spring Watch and Autumn Watch as well. It's a great privilege because um, working with a fantastic team of people. I hate being a presenter. <laughs> Presenters are often described as cherries on cakes. I don't like the analogy particularly. And there's no point in being a cherry on a stale cake. And this is a cake of the highest order. I've dipped it into a metaphor, which is utter nonsense, <laughs> straight away. <laughs> <laughs> but the fact is that... You know, Making me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a, it's a fantastic team. And, and without them, it would obviously be nothing. Uh, I'm the live director on the programme. Um, it's been an absolutely wonderful programme to work on. We've had a fantastic team of technical people, um, all of whom have really got involved, not just with the programme, but with the content of the programme as well. And they've all ended up caring, really, really genuinely caring about not just the wildlife, but about what they, and obviously what they do as well. Um, and it's just been an amazing thing to work on. Fantastic. Uh, I'm Fiona Pitcher, and I was the executive producer when it started out for the first four years or so. And I always remember when we started out, we were in a recreation ground in the middle of Bristol suburbs, would you believe? Um, and we had the Lodi. The Lodi would regularly take a siesta and get very cross on a regular basis. But we've, we've moved and it's got bigger and bigger and better and better, surrounded by a wonderful team. Um, and it's been great, absolutely great. I'm very pleased with this too for everyone. Great. I'm Tim Schoons. I'm the current executive producer um, of Spring Watch and Autumn Watch, um, raised by Fiona. <laughs> I took on the reins. Um, and um, it's been wonderful looking after such a range of different things and different parts of the BBC, wildlife organisations, even city councils all chipping in. The family has just got bigger and bigger and bigger, but the vibe has always stayed the same, both in the team, a really tight family, everyone pulling together towards a common goal, but also out there in the other communities, the wildlife organisations and of course the audience. So it's really nice to have been done, some, done something in broadcasting feels like it's actually made a difference. Mm. It's great, really good. So much more than a piece of telly. It's a great piece of telly, but it's very, very much more, more than just a piece of telly. Yeah. I'm Ian Dewar, and I'm the engineering manager for the programme for Springwatch since it started. And uh, basically, I'm head of blame. I'm, I, <laughs> I, I, I uh, design and uh, put into place all the technical systems to make the show work. I call him the Duke of Hazards, actually. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. Literally. <laughs> um, so Fiona then, when you first started out, yeah. 
Nature is unpredictable. It tricky. Is. Live it's TV, it's unpredictable and yes. tricky. Why not put them together? That sounds like madness. Um, there were many times when I thought it was madness <laughs> and my heart was in my boots, trust me. And, and Derek, you know, bless his heart, if you add Bill Oddie into that sometimes. <laughs> but but, but <laughs> what, one of the, what, on, a, on a serious note, one of the things we said we would always do is, is keep it real, which sounds a bit pompous. But that actually gave us some of our best moments that were, you know, completely barking mad. Like, the I remember the first night of the first transmission of the very first show, there was nothing, dot, 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 nothing happening and Bill was getting crosser and crosser but you know what it was still great telling. Yeah. And Tim are you surprised the response from, from viewers and how much the show's loved? Yes and no I think everyone we, we've always realised that everyone loves UK wildlife you know because everyone has grown up with it you know it's all around us but I guess yes the, the, the response and the loyalty of the audience their, their willingness to get stuck in and, and get involved as we call it has been amazing and it's just fed on it because it's, it's inspired us to try out new things and do some frankly quite odd things because we know they'll get behind us and that in turn has made them feel more special so this is, this is the new age of broadcasting when communities of audiences actually start influencing shows Quite scary, but very, very exciting at the same time. So it really feels like we're beginning to do that. And we've got nature writing our scripts. We've got the audience editing them. So, um, yeah, we'll be out of the job soon, won't well, we? The well, yeah. the, the, word, the, word, the word control is, is a word you kind of have to let go when you're doing spring watch. Within, right. within reason. That's why you have to take over, really, isn't it? <laughs> and just to enjoy it. Can I ask the head of blame yes. over there yes. on the edge? Uh, when you're asked to do something, how many times are you sort of clasping your forehead going, how am I going to make this happen? Quite a few, quite a few. However, it's, it's, it's a great challenge, and that's what makes it interesting. The fact that it's live, and we're pushing the boundaries of what's technically possible, it's brilliant. It's a fabulous show to work on, and everybody enjoys the challenge. Everybody gets behind it. And, and, and you told me, I remember you telling me in the early days, that it was way more complex than the Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> Not in entirety. Certainly any individual, uh, individual site in the in Olympics, uh, this is more complicated, yeah. certainly, yeah. Yeah. And, and Chris, then, the future of the show looks pretty promising. What's next? Well, I think the thing is there's, there's always a good story out there when it comes to wildlife. And the challenge for, for our bit of the programme is to make sure there are new stories to be told in an entertaining and informative way about creatures which are very familiar to the audience. So it, it's a, that's, that's all. You know, with last year we had one little fact. It was in the first programme, actually, about blue tits. And they're a species. You know, there's 90 million pairs in the UK. They turn up in 90% of the gardens where the people take time to look. But we need to find something new to say. And we found, we found something, and the audience response was great. I think that we'll have to employ uh, greater technology to give us an even deeper insight into the creatures' lives. That's been an ongoing process. Um, so we can learn more and display more. But it's really, it's all about... In, in igniting an interest in that audience, particularly the young ones, the families, um, and getting them out afterwards to engage with that wildlife themselves. Because what we all really want, you know, beyond the TV, is for a healthy British wildlife. And that needs our viewers to go out and help us.